Welcome into a new video. I am Joe with Techternative, and today is finally the day we're going to be spinning up our Plex Docker on our Unraid system. We finally have all of our data transferred from our TrueNAS to our Unraid, and we are ready, and we've configure, configured all of our drives, we configured our settings, we set up our apps to be able to be downloaded, everything set up, we are good to go. We are going to install Plex today. We are going to create a share for Plex. I'll get into that in a little bit here. Then we're gonna install Plex. We're gonna configure Plex. And then we are going to shut down TrueNAS and finally see if we are able to use Unraid or if we like Unraid better than we like TrueNAS as our network attached storage. So let's get into it. Let's get on over to the Unraid dashboard, Unraid dashboard and let's see how easy this is gonna be. I'm hoping this is gonna be a quick video. So let's get over, let's get over there. All right, we are on our dashboard here. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new share. We're gonna create a private share strictly for Unraid to use for its Plex Docker container. Um, the reason being is when you set up the Plex Docker, you have to assign folders for its Plex system. So transcoding, just, basic file paths for whatever data that it needs to do. I, I don't really know the in and outs of what data needs to be saved from the Plex Docker, but we need to have a file share that I'm gonna put in. You could put it in a different file share if you want. Um, I'm just going to create a Plex Docker share, and that's where that data is gonna go, and I'll show you that here now. So let's go over to shares. Let's add a share. We're gonna go Plex Docker and add all right um we are not going to export this we are going to make this private because we don't want this accessible to anything but docker and we're going to do that for both smb and uh smb yeah smb and nfs so we'll make this private and apply boom done so we have our docker our Plex Docker share here. Now we can install and configure Plex. So let's go on over to the apps here. We will look for Plex Media Server. Just a quick note, there are multiple Plex applications within Unraid. As you can see down here, they are different people's repositories. So um, I don't know who Ben Hex is but that's their repository for their setup of plex so i don't know what the differences are we're going to be using the official plex media server here so let's just go over to actions and let's get this installed and if you keep hearing beeps for some reason my gopro likes to make beeps every now and then so just ignore that uh let's see plex media server that's a fine name the repository that's fine network type we're going to go to custom and that way we can give it its own IP address. So we are gonna be using 242 for our Plex server. The only reason I like to do this because one, I like to set up an HA proxy for, for Plex. So it's its own IP address, own HA proxy within my PFSense uh, firewall. So I like to have its own IP address. If you did click, you can use host and that's just going to use the same IP address as our Unraid, which would be the .215 uh, IP address, also utilizing the Plex ports. But let's say you didn't want to use the Plex ports and you wanted to use 443 for your Plex ports. Well, now you're going to have a conflict on the host IP. I'm still going to use the same default ports that Plex comes with. But if you did want to use the 443 or, you know, a different port that you can set up within Plex, it's, it's going to conflict on that IP address. So I just like to give it its own IP address and call it a day. So let's move on to the host path. So again, the container path for data and transcode, that's why we set up the share. So we're just going to go in here to edit. The container path is going to be slash transcode. We're going to click on Plex Docker, and then I'm just going to throw this in the transcode path um read write save um same thing for data i think it might create the 
directory anyways, but if it's a couple folders down, I'm not really too worried about it. We'll save that. And then the next thing we want to do is because we have data on our share, such as legal movies that we've uh, inherited, that we want to use on Plex, we have to tell that Docker container where to go to utilize those files. So let's get those paths configured now. We're gonna do a, uh, yep, we're gonna give it a path and then we're gonna give it a name, which I'm just gonna call this one movies. We're gonna do a container path. So this is the one, this is what you'll see in Plex when you go and set where your movies are. So I'm just gonna give it the movies, you know, slash movies. And then this is where you tell them where in your share your movies are. And mine are in videos. So it's just basically taking your host and making it available to your Docker container, right? So it's just going to be a one-for-one -one translation of Plex slash videos to slash movies that I can use in Plex. So that's what we're doing here. So let's we'll add. And we're going to do that for... Um, movies and we're going to do that for tv shows container path is going to be tv shows host path is going to be the almost the exact same so we're going to go down to here we're going to go to plex we're going to go to tv shows read write add and one more we do have music we don't really utilize the music functionality inside of plex however it's an option it's configured in my true nas plex instance so let's just whatever if i ever start use, utilizing that instead of hulu or not hulu spotify or anything like that whatever that's the that's what we're gonna do so now that we have movies tv shows music let's hit apply it's going to build out the container once it's done building out the container, it'll have this screen. You can always notice, you'll always know when Plex is done installing something because it'll have the down, the done button down here, or it'll say like cancel or whatever down here. But if it's done, it'll actually give you the done button. So let's just click on done here and that's it. Let's go back to the dashboard and now we'll see our Plex media server is in fact spun up and started. That is housed in the Docker area. So um, here it has all the ports and the IP addresses already here. So it's just saying, hey, I'm gonna translate. Basically it's a one-to-one, -one. it's not even a real NAT, right? Um, but if you did choose to pick the host, you would see the same things. But if you did have overlapping uh, UDP or TCP ports, that's where you, it could get a little funky. So um that's why i just went with its own ip address keep it separate keep it simple now one thing that i do like to do for all my, i want plex to start on boot so if you do un uh reboot your unraid system just hit the uh, the auto start right here and it'll auto start um yeah that's all you need to do if you do notice that it's not started here i'm not sure if you can start it you can start it from here so yeah, um, all you have to do is click on the little Plex media icon and you can start it and do everything from the dashboard here. Let's click on the web UI. It should redirect us to Plex. It'll probably prompt us to log in to our Plex account. There we are. Um, this application is not hosted by Plex and that's my, we'll black that out. Um, and doesn't even gonna ask me for a password, so that's cool, it must be already logged in. Um, as you can see, I already have movies and everything configured on my Plex currently. So let's head over to our, did we not give it a name? We might not have given it a name. Um, so this is our new Plex. We didn't give it a name. Uh, you should be, we should have done that at the beginning. Um, I just didn't even look at it. So you can give it a friendly name here. So I'm just going to do Unraid for now. I am going to change the friendly name to be Iceflix. That's kind of what I've always used over here on my other media server. And I'll just rename it so we're not confused when my family goes to use Iceflix, right? Iceflix. Um, then they're not confused on, wait, where's Iceflix? 
because it does show up in some of our apps. So like on the fire stick or whatever that we're using, um, there's some issues there. So let's go over to libraries. looks like it already mapped movies, um, but we can add a library. Let's just double check edit library um, for movies. We'll add folders. That's not what we want. So we want to come in here and we want to click uh, there it is movies and add so now our movies is going to be pointed to this folder i don't think we need to set anything really in advanced we'll save those settings and now it's gonna it's gonna go and get the metadata and all the it's gonna look for credits it's gonna look for you know um all the things that plex does so it's gonna get any of the fan art or movie art or anything like that so let's add the rest of our libraries so tv shows next look for the tv show folder that we created when we built it and let's go tv shows add library and then we'll do music so we'll go music here media music add and that's it that's all you need to do now let's say you don't have you don't have movies you don't have tv shows you don't have anything already put on your unraid but you're going to be building it out but you still wanted to get plex set up so you can handle all the plex intricacies of getting your account set up and just at least working you can go over to your docker container right and you click into the media into the name and you will just go down and click add path and apply and you'll probably have to restart the container at that point to get your new um file paths where your new data is so don't be concerned if you don't have data and you still want to get your plex con container configured and set up regardless of any data that you already have you can come back in retroactively and add these paths in so no worries there uh let's we'll just click on done doesn't really do anything and there's our plex um that's gonna spin and that's gonna spin for the next well, however long i got i have more than five movies on my plex instance so now we're ready to let this spin i'm gonna shut down true nas today later at a different time um but i just wanted to say thank you for coming on this journey as i move from true state or true nas over to unraid uh i am going to give my follow-up video in about a month um, maybe right around a month, right? So come February 1st, sometime in that first week of February, I want to give an update on how I'm liking Unraid compared to TrueNAS. And is Unraid going to be my home for the future? More than likely, just because I already bought the drives in a, it, it, that aren't going to work for a TrueNAS system. I'm just going to go, probably just going to bite the bullet regardless if I completely like it over TrueNAS anyways just because it's just gonna work better functionally for me because of the drives that I have now that I can pull my true NAS drives out format them and put them on so then I'll have 24 terabytes of data versus the if I didn't like unraid and still wanted to use my 12 terabyte hard drives I would lose six terabytes on everything so it'd be six across the board so I'd only have 24 terabytes completely versus having 24 terabytes and 12 terabytes as a parity so there's just there's just better incentives just for me to utilize more storage on the unraid because now i can go buy another six i can buy an eight i can buy a 10 um, i just can't exceed that 12 terabyte parity so i think just on that factor alone i'm going to go with unraid but i'll give an update in about a month after using it see how the family likes plex on this version versus true nas all the things like that so thank you if you enjoyed enjoy the content if you jo enjoy types of uh, types of videos like this where we're just kind of fumbling around please like subscribe uh, follow me on the blue skies the twitters the follow me on the discord we have a discord server um, things of like that so i'll link those everything down somewhere here right in the screen click on it follow me like subscribe all of my 
So I do create run books for everything that I do in the lab. So if you go down, I'll link my GitHub repository in the bottom. So I have a bunch of markdown with screenshots, uh, step-by-step -step instructions, prereqs, things, of, things like that for all the labs that I'm doing for the videos. So you can follow along on my repository with the video, uh, as well as I just have random scripts and fun things that I've done out there on my GitHub as well. If you want to check it out, I'll link that down to the bottom as well. So thank you for the ride. Thanks for being here. I will see you guys in the next video.